Hi everyone, uh, thanks for your time tonight. Hello. <laughs> Uh, my name is Nima. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about microservices. Uh, can you, um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the webcam will cut off. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, before I start, a little bit of background and why I want to talk about microservices. So, as we all probably heard, microservices is the big buzzword nowadays. So, everyone is talking about microservices. Everyone wants to do microservices. So, how many people here are doing microservices currently? Okay, quite a few. Yeah, good. Yeah. So, uh, in the last few years, uh, I started development uh, in Peninsula Business Services here in Manchester, and then I moved to ThoughtWorks as a consultant and worked at many different projects. And for the last three years, I've been using microservices in different projects, different environments. And I saw a lot of projects fail, and I saw a lot of projects succeed. So tonight, I'm not going to convince you why you should use microservices. I'm going to talk about what are the problems that you will see if you are going to use microservices. So, uh, as I said, I was uh, working for Peninsula, then ThoughtWorks. A few months ago, uh, myself and my business partner, Kate, we had an idea to uh, change recruitment. So, as a developer and a business analyst, we said that we built Astrolab for uh, techie people, and we started it in Manchester. So go and have a look and give us some feedback. And by the way, this is built by microservices. I'm going to use some examples of what uh, we use microservices for and how we built Astrolab uh, during the talk. So on paper, uh, building a microservice, building your application in microservices makes sense. And all of us work with monoliths, with big software that is hard to refactor, it's hard to release. And if you are making one part of, we are changing one part of the software, we have to release everything. If we want to scale only one part of the software, again, we have to scale everything. So we all are familiar with problems of monolith systems. And uh, on a slide, it makes perfect sense to break that big software into smaller pieces and make that complexity of the main go away. But uh, the question is, if the complexity goes away, where does it go? And I think this is, this is the first problem that I want to talk about. That this complexity that uh, uh, we had in domain in monoliths will go to interaction points between services and will go to our deployment and releasing strategy, so uh, releasing practices. So when we are working with microservices, uh, releasing deployment becomes very, very hard. So most of us are used to uh, working with monoliths. It means that we have one, two, three, maybe four applications that we are running in our CI pipeline. And uh, then we want to jump into microservices world when all of a sudden we want to have tens or even maybe sometimes I saw hundreds of microservices in pipelines. And that is orders of magnitude more complex than running just uh, an, uh, one single, single application in, in your pipeline. So if you're doing microservices and you're not managing operational complexity uh, very well, you're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see a lot of manual testing after each release. You'll usually see massive UI testing frameworks. And in a lot of places, I saw dependency, uh, well, what people call deployment dependency trap as well. So one of the greatest benefits of microservices is that you can deploy them individually. That means that uh, each service can evolve and can uh, be released without touching other parts of the system. And in a lot of businesses, I saw that because they're not good at managing operational complexity, they have to release everything together. And straight away, you lose one of the biggest benefits of microservices. A recent example of this, uh, actually when we came up with Astrolab idea, we were commuting to Glasgow every month, every week, not every month. And we were working for a student loans company. And a student loans company, very complex domain, they had 36 microservices and they had uh, deployment dependency. So it meant that any small change to any service, they had to deploy the whole system, run a lot of manual tests, and then do a lot of uh, testing after that. So uh, that wasn't really an ideal situation, and they didn't get any benefit from using microservices architecture. So one way to manage this is to do DevOps as a team, to embrace DevOps culture, and not have an operational team and a software development team. 
not even a software development team, uh, DevOps person. My uh, advice is to have DevOps as part of your practices and all of your developers should do DevOps. Another thing uh, is to use cloud if you can. So I've seen many different projects and the ones that are using cloud are much more successful than the ones that are using on-premises infrastructure simply because there are a lot of tooling around managing complexity for things like AWS or Azure. Uh, so, uh, but if you are moving to a microservices architecture, this is, I think, the biggest thing you need to think about. The second uh, issue that I want to talk about is uh, higher cost of refactoring. So uh, the IDEs that we are using, if you're using uh, Visual Studio or Sublime or IntelliJ, all of these IDEs have really, really good cap uh, capabilities to do refactoring. So if you want to change a class, if you want to rename something, if you want to extract something out, it's really easy to do it when you are in one code base. As soon as you move into multiple code bases, it becomes a nightmare. And especially when you have a concept that spans across multiple services, it becomes really, really difficult to uh, refactor that, uh, that bit of the code. And I think Andy had it in his talk, refactor until it's simple. It's very hard when you have microservices to refactor it until it's simple. So here, uh, I would say, uh, build it as part of an existing service first, then refactor it until it's simple, then break it out as a, as a different service. This gets especially hard when you're changing uh, contracts. So if you're refactoring, changing the service contract, that makes things very, things very, very difficult because then uh, you have to test it with everything else. And for that, I saw that a lot of people are using integration testing, which again, makes things very slow and very hard. So just to help with that, make sure you're using con uh, consumer driven contract testing uh, and tools like Pact are quite helpful. So this is, this is, a talk on its own how to do this, but have a look at Pact on GitHub. It's a very, very good tool and makes your whole integration test suite go away. And uh, you unit test all of the contracts uh, using uh, using Pact instead of integration testing them. So and then that makes refactoring a lot easier. Another thing that makes refactoring hard is getting the service boundaries wrong and. That sounds pretty simple on paper, but uh, in projects, I've seen it that it becomes a big nightmare. So uh, we all know developers uh, become very, very passionate about how to, where to put code, whether it's a different module, any I mean, microservices, whether it's a different service, is it part of an existing service? And again, at student loans, I've been to meetings where they debated this for hours, sometimes with days talking about where to put the new entity. Is it a new service? Is it part of an existing service? And this can create a lot of problems. Again, it makes you lose one of the biggest uh, benefits of microservices as well. So uh, this is another thing that you need to look for. And from my experience, try to add any new entity to an existing service. Never create it as a, as a new service. And then build it as, a, as part of a new uh, existing service. Do your refactoring, make sure it's simple. On last responsible moment, once you're comfortable with the code, once you know enough about the code, then move it into a different service. So these were all the three points that I had. So I think I cut too much from this talk. So this talk was originally 45 minutes, when Mark told me it's only lightning talks, I cut a lot of slides. So, but, uh, the last one is general recommendations on how to do microservices. And this is again, learning from experience. Uh, so. Uh, the first one is start very, very small. So Martin Fowler recently had an article, start with a monolith. I don't agree with that. I said start with two different services, don't start with a monolith. And then grow it from there. And that's how, that's how I did it on, on, on Astrolab. So we had only two services. We went live eight weeks ago, and now we have five services. So uh, once we were very, very comfortable with our releasing strategies, with our testing, and we were sure that we could deploy every service, every single service independently, then we started to create more services. And now that we have many services, it means that different parts of the system can scale differently. So we don't need to scale everything or uh, release everything together. And the last point is really just to make sure that you're comfortable with all of those practices before moving to microservices. So deployment automation, very, very important. Again, if you're using cloud computing, there are some really, really good tools out there to do it. 
monitoring and troubleshooting is another one. So again, if you're starting with two services, it's quite easy to debug and test and troubleshoot two services. If you have more, it's hard. Get good at it first and then move to uh, more services. And that's it. So, okay. <laughs> Any questions? You said that you started with two, yep. but then you, now you have five. Yep. Um, did the extra three come by splitting stuff out of the existing two, or were they additional? Yes, no, uh, they came uh, out of like, splitting the, one, the other ones into more services. And then uh, one thing that we did, we built like uh, a pipeline template that we could just drop some code in it and it would just create a service and then release it and deploy it. And because it's really uh, all of the process is automated, it's quite easy to say, okay, this whole entity, this bounded context makes it to be its own service. So it's quite easy to just cut the code, put it in the service template, put it in the pipeline, and it's, it will be released. So, it's very, very little effort once you automate everything and you get good at uh, those practices that I mentioned. Yeah? What microservices share a database? Uh, no, they don't. And uh, I think that's, that's a big debate whether they should have uh, uh, shared storage or not. I personally think they shouldn't. Uh, one example project that I worked on was Tramchester, if you heard of it. So Tramchester, we had this issue that we had the timetable data in a relational database format and we had the whole uh, root file limit that we thought it could be a graph database and we split it into two services. So there was one that was dealing with timetables, had a MySQL backend database and the other service which was in charge of root finding had a graph database. And Kate is laughing at me because we've talked about Clamchester so much. <laughs> so, uh, and we had two separate services, two different types of storage. So I think that's very helpful to use right tool for the job. So if you need to use a graph database, use graph database. If you need to use a document store, use a document store. Don't stick to like one big or SQL database. Yeah? What influences your decision when you should move to into a separate service? So I think uh, for me is when I have enough information and uh, it's when you know that domain well. And uh, so uh, I think as Andy said, we write some code, we refactor it until it's simple. And uh, when I think about all the code that I wrote in, in, in the past, and it's always a point that said, oh, I could have broken it down, broken this down to, to smaller pieces. So I think once I have enough information, I'll break it until I can. And, uh, I know size and microservices is another big, big debate, but I like to think that it's a microservice if you can rewrite it in two weeks. Otherwise, it's more, it's bigger than a microservice. Cool. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.